This video is going to discuss Kepler's third law and will include some numerical calculations. So Kepler's third law and law one and two are on other videos that I've uh, put on YouTube. Um, third law, the square of the period, and the period is represented by the symbol P and we're gonna use the units of years for P. The square of that period equals the cube of the semi-major axis a is the symbol for the semi-major axis, and it's measured in astronomical units. We have p squared equals a cubed. This is only valid for objects orbiting our sun when you're using years and uh, astronomical units. There are other versions of this formula that are more general, but uh, this is nice, simple for introductory astronomy. So here we have uh, a diagram from Wikimedia Commons posted by R.J. Hall. And we have two orbits around the sun. And A is the semi-major axis, half of the diameter in the case of a circle. And on this one, I need to fix it just a little bit. There's a center of the ellipse. And A is the semi-major axis, so half of the long axis of the ellipse. And in general, the orbits of the planets are elliptical with the sun at one focus. <clears throat> so these two objects, let's say that the values of A are the same for these two orbits. They're both two astronomical units, just to pick some random number. They're both two astronomical units. What's true about the period of this object versus the period of this one? No, nope, the period is the same. P squared equals A cubed. The only thing that affects the period is the value of A, the semi-major axis, the size of the orbit. The eccentricity does not change the period. So that's one thing about Kepler's third law. The period only depends on the size of the orbit. So p squared equals a cubed. So we'll just write in same period here. Suppose that the uh, astronomical units for the semi-major axis is three. Three astronomical units larger than the Earth's orbit. The Earth's orbit, a is equal to one astronomical unit. Um, the Earth-Sun distance is sort of a basic uh, unit when discussing distances in the solar system. It's not metric, it's not kilometers, but uh, it's useful for this equation, and uh, we're going to use it here. So we have some object. A is three astronomical units. What's the period? Well, P squared is equal to the value of A cubed. So P squared would equal 3 times 3 times 3. The first 3 times 3 is a 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. And now I need to take the square root of 27. So to solve this, p equals square root of 27. I've taken square root of both sides of this equation. Uh, the p squared becomes p, and here I have square root of 27. This is approximately 5 plus a little bit. Uh, 5 squared is 25. More accurately, the value of p here is 5.2 years, if you use a calculator. So p squared equals a cubed. If we're given the value of a, first we cube it. Use a calculator if you wish. And then you find the square root of uh, that result. That's your value for the period, and it is in units of years. So here we have uh, another calculation. Object in the solar system has an orbit. The period is eight years. What's the value of the semi-major axis? P is eight years. So P squared is A cubed. Eight squared is 64 equals A cubed. Can you think of a number where you multiply it by itself three times and you come up with 64? Perhaps you're guessing 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. So the value of A is 4 astronomical units. It's consistent with this previous example. As the size of the orbit gets larger, the period gets larger. Through AUs, we had 5 years for the period. In the case of 4 AUs, we have 8 years for the period. It's not a linear relationship. You do need to go through the calculation. P squared equals A cubed. Um, Halley's Comet. So it passes close to the sun, has a perihelion about every 76 years, and its eccentricity is 0.97. What is the perihelion distance? 
what is the perihelion distance? Well, we could go ahead and start. We're given 76 years here. That's our value for P. So 76 squared equals A cubed. And for this, I'm not going to attempt to do it mentally. I'd use a calculator. I'd square 76. And then I would invoke the cube root function on the calculator rather than try to do trial and error. Uh, so 76 squared, that's 57. 76 is A cubed. And now taking the cube root of both sides, cube root of 5776 would equal A. And on my calculator, you ought to check this on your calculator, I get 17.9 AUs for the semi-major axis for uh, Halley's Comet. Uh, double that, and you have uh, kind of the length of the ellipse. So roughly 36 AUs for uh, the length of uh, uh, Halley's Comet. What is the perihelion distance? The perihelion distance. Well, in an ellipse, if I go back to here, the perihelion distance, I'm searching for this number, the distance between the sun and the comet from the center to the perihelion uh, location is A. And there's a letter C that's used from the center to where the sun is. And we can see that this perihelion distance, I'll just abbreviate it by the word peri, that perihelion distance is going to be equal to A minus C. We have the A value. How can we deduce the value for C? How can we find the value for C? Well, the eccentricity is related to C and A. Uh, the eccentricity is C divided by A. So if I multiply both sides by A, the eccentricity times A, one of these has to be an A, eccentricity times A gives us the value for C. We know the value for A is 17.9 AUs. We know the value for the eccentricity is 0.9. 0.97. So if I multiply those two together, 0.97 and 17.9 AUs, check this on your calculator, but I came up with 17.4 AUs. And our calculation for the perihelion distance, A minus C, the A value is 17.9 AUs. C is 17.4. This is a very long ellipse. And we end up with 0 0.5 AUs. That is the distance of closest approach for Halley's Comet. Um, it is inside the orbit of the Earth. Uh, but there's more complications as to why that's very, 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 very unlikely that Halley's Comet will hit the Earth. But it does move uh, inside the Earth's orbit as it approaches the sun. So those are calculations involving p squared equals a cubed. You must remember that a has to be in units of astronomical units. p has to be in units of years. Use your calculator and you'll succeed in calculating various facts about elliptical orbits and p and a. So if you have questions, be sure to ask your instructor. That's where we'll uh, end this particular video. And you can find notations of other videos at astronomy.gpclements.com, astronomy.gpclements.com.